Okay, good evening and welcome to round seven of the online chili eating competition. We are building towards a grand final on Halloween. Um, so far, we've been through six rounds, um, six heats. We've got six winners and we're looking for a seventh one to join us on Halloween and become the first UK Nuke League of Fire online chili eating champion. Um, so, yeah, we had a, a round on Saturday, a round on Sunday, and this is the final heat. This is um, round seven on Tuesday. So good to see you all. Thank you all for watching. Um, let's bring in our guest. She is the law of chili eating. Um, she's won, I think, over 70. Don't quote me on that. I think 74, 76. Definitely over 70 um, physical chili eating competitions. So there's no position that she's not been in with this. But online chili is a little bit different. Um, so she's joining me in order to talk about, you know, who the people are, what they're going through, um, what they need to expect, how they need to get through the competition. So let's let's bring her in. My guest is Shahina Wasim, the UK Chili Queen. Hello. Hi, Stephen. Thank you for having me again. Thank you. So on Sunday, we had um, round six. And we had Irina, we had Joe, we had, uh, who else did we have? Can't remember. Matt Tangent. Matt Tangent, the winner. I can't even get it. How good was that one? That was such a good competition. I'm it was an incredible competition. How good was Ray? I mean, I just did not know she could push herself so far. She, well, I kind of guessed it. I did say before we started the show that, you know, I feel like she could go really far. She could be the dark horse. And she did extremely well. It was really nice to see that. She got to round, I mean, she's always said that she couldn't handle heat at all. And yet uh -huh. she got to round nine and she comes second. That was like crazy, wasn't it? Absolutely. You know, people think they can't do something and then they push themselves when they're in a competition environment. This is the beauty of two eating competitions. People do sort of kind of have family watching and all sorts of things to look, you know, look into and everything. So they kind of push themselves further than they would normally. You know, you would never eat like a yellow mama or something just just in your home. But in a competition, you would and you'd push yourself to do it. So it's incredible how far she pushed herself. And Matt Tangent, your bet for the winner, you were right again. Well done, you. I just knew it. You know, he's quite competitive. I mean, he's a very gentle soul, but he's a bit like me, I think, when it comes to chili eating competitions. He gets the streak out of nowhere and he pushes himself beyond belief, especially if he's going up against someone he really wants to try to beat. And I've had this experience in Brighton where he had multiple reapers in the final run with me and, and you know, he just went so, so far, further than he'd ever been before. So I knew he could push himself. He was all the way through, he looked like he was about to drop out. He was, I think, <laughs> from the second round, he looked absolutely torturous. Oh, my oh, God, he starts shaking and he gets this, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think how, you know, he, I think if we got to the speed round, again, we didn't get another speed round. Um, but you just, once we got to round, I think it, we got to round nine, we didn't quite get to the hurt berry. But mm -hmm. I think it looked a little bit like he won, but he was almost on his last legs. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You, don't, you don't know how far that would have gone once we got to round 10. I, Matt's always told me he's always been quite honest and upfront about it. His gag reflex goes. So it could have been that the hurt very would have triggered it and that would have been it. He would have been peeking on the screen and stuff. Nobody wants to see that. But I don't know. Some people do. But I don't think he wanted to do that. Uh, but it was kind of lucky that it ended before that. But he would have pushed himself and done it, um, I think, up to the end. But he was lucky not to get to that point. But, yeah, I felt like he was going to go any second, and I was just, like, rooting for him, keeping everything crossed. But it, <laughs> it was a good watch, actually. But so good to have a League of Fire representative in the final, I think. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? It was like we had him in the first belt match, you know. It was really lovely to have him because, you know, he's one of the founding members and to have him, have him between me and Johnny Scoble was great. You know, he's a great guy, great soul. He's been in the Chile community for years, selling sauces, competing, all sorts of things. So the guy has a great spirit and I loved having him between us. Okay, so tonight, let's have a look at what we have. Um, mm -hmm. 
bring in whoop, let's bring in that to the stream. So tonight this is our lineup. Round yeah. seven. Um, as with all the other competitions, it's been in, out, in, out, haven't got boxes, haven't got pods, need boxes. Can I come in? Um, so this is our final lineup. Um, um, first of all, we have Lee Alexander, who is the um, owner of the 405 Chili Company. So he's a producer. Um, yeah. he, makes, um, he makes one of the sauces that is a nuke challenge that mm -hmm. goes with the pizza challenge. What do you know about Lee Alexander? Oh, Lee Alexander is amazing. He's great to watch. He's done quite a few challenges, and I love watching him. Um, you know, he's got a great online presence. He does amazing sources, and he is great. He's got a very sort of sportsman view, just uh, sort of competing, you know, so it's lovely. He's always up for anything. He does the new challenges. He does the League of Fire challenges, and I'm so glad to have him competing in a cheating competition and to watch how far he can push himself. That would be really nice. Have we seen him eat any pods before? I have, I think, yeah. He's actually quite good. He does kind of, like, I don't know, like, from what I remember, he kind of, it's the gag reflex that goes. I think his tolerance is not so bad. Um, but I think today he could be the dark horse. Who knows? I've got great hope. But, you know, all I remember about, the most important thing I remember about Lee is the chocolate. Like the moles, he puts pictures up all the time of all the things he's creating, and it's actually really nice to watch. And it's very sort of informative the way he does uh, design his chocolate, design other sauces and things. He's very passionate about it all. Yeah, I think I mean to be a chili sauce producer, you have to obviously be able to take a certain amount of heat. Um, yeah. I can't. I've seen him do challenges, but I can't remember ever seeing him do fresh pots. And as we know. Fresh pods, yeah. um, you know. Obviously, we can't see every single challenge going, but I'd, I no, can't. can't. Yeah. There's, there must be like hundreds of you know challenges out there, and tons. Might, of, hard to know, keep up, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I put him into one of two people who I think could be a dark horse. Yeah, so we'll, we'll me too. See. We'll see. We're agreed on that. <laughs> Secondly, Lee Alton. Now, mm. Lee, Lee is one who's come back again. Um, he's filled. He's very kindly filled in a slot that was supposed to be taken by originally Scott Jordan, and then it went to um, Sean Plum. So it's a bit of a sort of cursed seat number two. We're on the third person yeah. for it. Um, he is not meant to take part in these cheating competitions. <laughs> <laughs> but if, if you remember, do you remember when he competed against Neil Child in our only yeah. speak round so far? Yeah. But this is the thing, right? I, I was so excited when I was uh, informed earlier that Lee Walton would be in it because I thought that would give him his second chance now like to actually be in a speed. Hopefully he gets a speed run because it's really exciting all around. And uh, for him to actually prove himself. And he, he did message me after the last competition. He said, the speed got me. It's one of those things, you know, and I'm not used to it. I can handle pod after pod, but to do the speed and that many peppers, I couldn't do it, but I'm going to practice. So he is committed and he has done so many competitions, you know, the guy is definitely into it and he's committed. So today, if you do get to speed round, he's going to be the one of, he's going to be the one of the guys that we have to watch out for, for sure. I think if this was 20 rounds and then a speed round, I think you'd have to say Lee's the favourite. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, he, he, he can, can really go and go and go and but I think oh, yeah. I had this experience with him last November where we went on pod after pod after pod. In the end, they said, well, we've done like 20 rounds, 20 plus rounds. Let's just do a reaper off. And then they gave us like a sort of a bowl full of reapers. And it was just whoever stopped first. And it was just me and him left at this point. This was in Portsmouth. And, um, you know, he ended up doing great. But it was one of those things. I think if he could just carry on, he would have. But to sort of eat everything all at once is very difficult you know this is the thing with chili eating competitions it should be all about everything you have to be a well-rounded person it has to be about sort of tolerance and perseverance you go through all the rounds and then you do have the speed at the end as well so then no one can debate oh she's just or he's just good at speed or he's just good at handling pods it's just everything comes into account which is great well obviously he knows what happens last time so yeah. I can imagine that's on his mind and he will be thinking to himself, if we get to that speed, 
I have to be quick. You know what I mean? I've so. kind of got to know Lee. He's going to push himself tonight. If it comes to speed, he's going to surprise us, and I know this. <laughs> okay, number three. Now we have a proper unknown, Gary Taylor. Um, so um, this was Rick Saunders' friend um, from okay. years ago, long, uh, long time good friend of Rick Saunders. And okay. he, he told me that I have a friend who'd like to be part. He's got a good tolerance. He can eat fresh chilies. He can eat very hot sauces. He's keen to play. And I was like, okay, let's get him in. And so this is, this is Gary Taylor. Now, we don't know much about Gary Taylor. I've seen a couple of videos of him eating a few fresh chilies mm -hmm. um, and going to Red Dog Saloon in London and um, having chilies there. So he's obviously yeah. one of these people who can just eat a, a few pods. Um, but he's never been in a chili eating competition. What what advice would you give for somebody who's got a good tolerance but has never done a competition before? Funnily enough, when I saw the name Gary Taylor, I was like, oh my God, who is this guy? I haven't heard of this one before. And then I was like, you know, have I missed something because I haven't been online that much this summer? So I was like really upset with myself thinking, what do I not know? But I'm glad to know that he's a newbie and he's been introduced by someone that we know well, Rick Saunders, so it's great. Uh, but obviously, he, he's he been to that Mad Dog Saloon. He's done the Wings Challenge, obviously, which I actually attempted quite a few years ago. I think it was like 2013 or 14 or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was incredible. It was really fun. But it's one of those things. It's like you just have to vacuum these wings like into your mouth and then spit them down, and then you get on this wall of fame. But... I don't think it's a great judge of like nature because people were leaving like wings half eaten and things like that, you know. So it's this very difficult sort of challenge to make it like um, on, on the wall of fame. Um, but if he's done that, he's done well, then that's pretty impressive. Uh, but what I would say is this is having wings is really hot, really spicy, especially hot wings challenge. It burns, like the sauce gets all around your mouth, in your fingers, in your lips, everywhere, and everything throbs, which is a bit different from pods because you, when you pick up a pod, you put it straight into your mouth, so you don't get it everywhere. You know, you hold it with a stem, you're careful. So I'm thinking he may have a chance because of that. He's quite great at dealing with like hot wings. He may be able to deal with um, pods, but the main thing about pods is the build up so you're doing one to ten rounds you get hotter and hotter with no fluid relief or whatever i don't think anything can prepare you for it unless you've been in a competition before so he's in for a surprise but i think like if he's done the wings challenge he may be a very very great competitor to watch out for tonight i mean as an observer i've i've been to a lot of chili eating competitions mm -hmm. and watched people duck out win everything and to me, there's two things that you've got to control with your mind. There's mm -hmm. the, your mind wants to give up because it's too hard, and your body yeah. wants to give up because it's too hard. And it's yeah. spinning two plates and trying to keep both of them in check, you know, yeah. not mentally and not giving up physically. Yeah. Obviously, it's you are very good at both of those. But, oh, my know. God, absolutely. Like, my mind is telling me, well, my heart's going... No, no, no. My mind's like, give up now, give up now. It's too painful. Mm. You're dying, you're dying. And my heart's like, no, 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 no. I've still got to carry on. I've got to carry on. So you push yourself. And the pain is crazy. It's immense. I can't ever explain to people the pressure you're kind of under, especially with my kind of record behind me. You know, like every time I go into competition, I'm like, oh my God, the, um, the stress and the pressure builds up a few days ahead of the competition. And you sort of kind of will yourself. It's like any great sport. Like, I know. Uh, chili eating which is an extreme sport but any kind of sport people probably do get under a lot of stress and pressure and it just kind of like plays on their mind and they have to do well the stress and pressure is immense uh, but it's one of those things you learn to get through it <laughs> okay number four Adele Wilkinson now mm -hmm. both know Adele um, she obviously um, has been eating pods for I think a year now and she, yeah. her training started last September for the time yeah. burner. Um, and we all remember what happened at the time burner. She she went up against Johnny Scoville in the final. And yeah. she, she came second in the speed round. He beat her. But she finished all the pods and won the whole festival's hearts. 
didn't she? With the way that she finished she it off. The festivals, but the whole world's heart, you know. And Johnny. If she, if she had just maybe won the competition, it wouldn't have been that good for her. But because what she did, what she did when she did it, it was incredible. People remembered her. She made a space in everyone's hearts because of that. And it was an incredible watch. I'll never forget it. She had this spirit, you know, and she was like, no, no matter what, I'm going to be a great sports person tonight. I'm going to finish all my parts. I don't care about winning or losing. I'm going to finish what's given to me. And she, in doing that, she won people's hearts. And, and the, because of that, she became known as Adele the Brave. I love her so much. She's got a great spirit. She suffered so much. She, that was her first ever competition, going up against someone who's amazing, like Johnny Scoville. And she ended up doing so well, and she made a mark for herself all around the world. And that's pretty incredible. So two things about Adele training. First of all, in the last round, um, well, first of all, she, she asked, she bought a box of pods from um, Pasture Fire. So a great big box of pods arrived. And during mm -hmm. the last during the last round, round six, she was eating pod for pod all the way through mm -hmm. the competition just to try and sort of like practice. And then last night, she decided to have a little pre-run and did mm -hmm. 11, 11 super hots, medium to hot, and three rounds as a mini speed in practice the night before. So she said, wow. seriously. Well, she's, she, basically, she means business tonight, then. If she's been doing that, that's crazy. I'll be like, no, I don't want to do that. In saying that, I have done competitions twice in one day in two different countries. I've done competitions Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So you know what? The girl's got it right. She's she's incredible. I love her for a reason, and this is it. You know, she's got this spirit. She knows she can do this, and she just pushes herself. She trains hard. It's great. The funny thing is, none of the pods were named, so she was lifting them out, going unknown pod eight, unknown pod eight, and there was chocolate ones, oh, ones, and you could tell at the end the glasses came off. Yeah. That was when they were really hot. But she was, compared to how she was last time when she wasn't feeling very well, I think yeah. she, she looks determined this time. But that was unlucky. She wasn't feeling well. It came to the speed round. She had to kind of like just, she had to give up. But she's got the spirit. And I have no doubt in my mind that she's going to make it really far tonight. She may even win. And, you know, I'll be rooting for her because this woman is very close to my heart. And I love the way she goes for it. She's training hard. And she's just looking forward to it. And this is what competition's all about. You know, you kind of just go for it. You push yourself beyond anything you've been through before. So that's great. Finally, we have Paul Jones. Um, now, just to remind you what happened with Paul Jones, he was up mm -hmm. against, um, in one of the early rounds, um, that was when James Nixon was in. And James mm -hmm. was doing his delay tactics. <laughs> Paul Jones is fun. Never let him forget that. <laughs> <laughs> but Paul, do you remember how much Paul Jones was bossing all the way through? It was like unfazed, a bit like I was totally gutted for him. It was the camera failing right at the end. It's yeah. like how lucky are you, Paul? I, I felt so sorry for him because he was actually like he looked so composed. He looked so great. And then the camera failed on him, and I was just feeling awful for him. But uh, that's why when I saw his name today, I was like, I'm actually so happy that he's going to do it again today. I said to him after that, if there was a way to get you back in, we will find it, because that was so just yeah. unjust. And so many people yeah. found it unjust. Yeah. Um, but, you know, he, he's, one who, he's one who does challenges. He's done quite a few, but he hasn't mm -hmm. done anything for a while. Now... Mm -hmm. My, an interesting question that I want to know from you is if you haven't done anything for a while, how much does your tolerance drop? Okay, so like, I'm going to give a very sort of controversial answer here. Um, so people say you have to build your tolerance up. As, as, as you do more and more challenges, you get better and better. And people will say, you know, when you're doing leading competitions, get easier, doesn't it? Because you're doing it all through the year. You're doing this, this, this in the summer. So by the end of the summer, you're going to do incredible. I say, no, that's not true. 
because I do not prepare. I don't sort of practice or do challenges before a competition or before any other challenges. So I kind of just go in it. I know the pain that's going to come. I know that what's going to take me through it. So I kind of like probably one of the reasons I don't do challenges much. And because he hasn't done a challenge recently does not mean he's not going to do well today because it is all for me and for me, maybe many other people, it's all in the mind absolutely a mind game where you push yourself beyond belief doesn't matter if you've done 10 challenges 15 challenges 10 competitions or whatever you know you just on the day you are who you are you're going to push yourself and it's all in the mind and it's always been like that for me because people do say like we eat pods every day to practice for pod eating competitions and we'll do five or six build up our tolerances and for me that is not how it is i do not build up my tolerance i will eat like finger chilies which you have given me as well they're lovely i eat quite my chili throughout like you know but a chili eating competition is a different ball game challenges are different and this guy even if he hasn't done challenges recently today you watch out for him he surprise us would you agree though that ch um, tolerance can be like we said before with your mind and your body do you think almost there's two tolerances there's one of the mind and one of the body and if you yeah. haven't if you haven't done pods for a while your yeah. body might be a little bit more do you know what I mean? Your body's feeling yeah. it, but your mind knows you can do it. I would agree with that to some extent, but I feel like when someone is in a competitive environment, they behave differently. So a competition lasts maybe 45, like the longest competition I've had was an hour and 10 minutes, a chili eating competition. And, you know, people were dropping out at the end. It still went to a speed round at the end of an hour and 10 minutes. So you just never know what you're going to get. And I feel like, you know, your mind tolerance and your body tolerance is one of those things. You just never know. It is all about the day, how you feel on the day and how you are against other competitors. It, there's a bit of luck involved. There's a bit of tolerance involved. There is a whole load of mental strength involved. Well, that's our five competitors. I know that you now have something that you would like to say. So I'm going to hand over to you to, to go through that. Okay. So, Stephen, thank you for having, um, you know, letting me have the stage for this big announcement. And please do tell me what you think of this, um, this uh, great concept that League of Fire have come up with. Uh, so basically, you know how you have the world rankings and i'm number one atomic is number two johnny school is number three and this goes back obviously legal fire make a great effort i cannot tell you how much time hours and hours and hours they spend logging everything in and and you know from years back we were talking about six seven eight nine ten years ago all the challenges to get the world rankings of chili eating competitors uh chili eating challenges and so they have done such a great deal so you have the all-time world rankings where i'm number one atomic menace is number two johnny's goal is number three and now they say that um, having thought about it and having had lots of input from different people, as well as you, I think you first suggested this as well beforehand, and that, that like, really, there should be something where people should not, like newcomers, if they were to come in and they were to see this legal table and they say, oh, my God, you get has got 1,200 points, atomic mm -hmm. menace has got 900 how do we beat that? There's no point. I'm never going to get in the world's top 10. So there's no point getting into the chili eating uh, challenges and competitions. There's no point at all. So what they've done, and they haven't eradicated the world rankings because they will still stay. So what they've done now is introduce a new uh, kind of annual ranking system, same as football, same as boxing and everything like that. So what you do is you wipe the slate clean every year and you have new competitors come in and they do challenges, they do competitions, they do everything. So everything's recorded annually. And then you have an annual champion, but not just the annual champion, because whatever you do will actually go into the all-time world rankings as well. So you get, so every time you do a challenge, say if I did five chugs, 
that will go into the all-time world rankings and then it will go into the Chugs Challenge uh, leaderboard. Then it will go into the annual uh, Chug Challenge. So, so if I, you know, luck, um, sadly, very, very sadly, I missed out on this. Their annual board starts from 1st of September till the 31st of August. So it's an annual thing. Just a bit like football and boxing, I think they start around September. And the reason for that is, is that around Christmas and New Year's, People are too busy doing other things, you know, like people involved with their families, people are on holidays and things like that. So they cannot actually start it on the 1st of January. But what people must not forget is that even if you've done a challenge or anything like that between sort of January and September, that is going to be recorded in your all-time world ranking. So that's not going to be discarded. That's not going to go amiss. That's still going to go towards your all-time world ranking. But the annual rankings will start from the 1st of September till the 31st. Now, I should be sad more than anyone your, else. Your chug challenge doesn't your your 12 chug challenge doesn't count then. 12 chug challenge doesn't count count because that was like the middle of August and I missed out. And you know, I, I will tell you that was probably one of the most painful and the toughest challenges I've ever done. And I suffered for more than I, I'd say about 16, 17 hours, and that will not be counted to us. But the thing is, I understand the position because how can it please everybody? They can't say, oh, because Shaheen of the UK Philippines did it on the 15th of August, let's start it from the 1st of August. They can't do that kind of thing because someone would have done something on the 30, 30th of July and then they'll be unhappy. So it's one of those things. But I completely respect and agree this, and agree with this. And now I'm in a position with zero points in this annual league table. Atomic Menace is really high because of his packy chips. He's number one. I'm at zero. No one knows me at all in this annual league. But then all-time world rankings, I'm still number one. So it's a very interesting concept. What, what happens here is now that we open up the league table and the Chile community, Chile World competitive sort of side of it to everybody, all the newbies. No one can be disheartened. People can come and do challenges, take part, do this, that and the other because they know that they are at like an equal ground with all of us. Not just it's not just me, Atomic Menace and Johnny Scowell, like at the top. These guys can come in and beat us every single year. And annual winner as well as uh, an all-time winner, as well as a league topper. How can you go wrong? I think that's a great idea. I think, what do you uh, think? I remember saying at the very beginning that it needed to be wiped clean at some point in the year to allow people to um, compete with the best from the Steven, start. I think you and Johnny Scoville and there was a few other people that kind of said the exact same thing. And as well as me, I was thinking, you know what, it's a bit unfair for people to go up against me every year when I've been competitions for the last six, seven years. So mm -hmm. now every year someone new stands a chance of coming into the Chile community, doing challenges and being known for their tolerance, not just me and Atomic Menace and Johnny Crow, newcomers, you know, and it's very exciting and I love the concept. And I love that you like that idea because you are one of the trigger factors, I think. But also, I like the fact that the world, um, the overall rankings are still maintained because that means it's fair on you of all the things you've done, but also fair on all the people that have put time, money, effort into all the challenges before September. But this is a problem. A lot of people think, well, what, what about all the money I spent and all the challenges and the pain I went through? Same as me. Before September, it's all lost. No, it's not all lost because your your accomplishments being recorded in three different leagues, which is the all-time world rankings, then it's the actual league table for the challenge, and then it's the annual league. So you will not miss out in any shape or form. None of your points will ever be null and void, never be discarded. You will always be recorded, no matter what. You're in the all-time world rankings. I love it. And now, you know what? Sadly, and I'm really gutted about it, but at the same time, I'm actually quite happy about it. I'm at zero, you know, uh, because I did my chats on the 15th, or 14th or 15th of August. I'm at zero now. I'm a nobody in this new annual league. But you but know what? Bring, bring it on. It's another competition. 
it's another league table. It's an Absolutely. addition. It's an addition Absolutely. to the fund. You know. Yeah. Thanks, I'm right. excited about this. This is all what competitions up, and when the belt matches come back on. That's where I'm going to go for it. I'm going to try to sort of do as many bell messages as I can when, you know, COVID is over. I'm excited about this. And I think this gives people a chance to be number one, not just me, not just Atomic Medicine, not Johnny Scoer. Other people have now got a chance to be number one annually, as well as contributing to their world rankings. So we cannot lose. So what does the winner get? For what? Yeah, well, the league, yeah. I don't know the full details, but they sort of slipped me a few details. But apparently, every single year, every single leaderboard, league table topper is going to get a certificate. And I have seen just like the work in progress, the certificate's amazing. It's all framed. Your name will go on it. The date of your completion, everything will go on it. So you get this um, at the end of every um, annual sort of uh, league table. And I think it's the 31st of all. You will get your name and everything for every leaderboard certificate all framed for you to sort of, you know, hang on your wall. It's an accomplishment. But much like in this world of records. Well, I'm fully behind it. No, I think pounds for people to be there to witness it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So I'm fully behind it. I think it's a great mm -hmm. idea. Um, but I can tell that the guys in the lobby are looking nervous. Oh, um, wow. <laughs> Let's bring them on. <laughs> they're ready to do some chili eating. Stephen, oh, I just want to say. Before you go and before you put me in the lobby, thank you for doing this. This no. is something that's been a highlight for people over the summer. You're a pioneer of online TV eating competitions. No, can, no one can buy it. And I can tell you the hard work, the all the sort of focus that goes into it and the concentration. You have to make sure everybody's got the right amount of pause and the exact pause and everything like that. And the work goes, people might not even realise. So thank you, Stephen, for putting this on for us all. Thank you. I appreciate your work. So I will see you again for the final on Halloween and we will preview the um, contestants again. Thank Absolutely. you for joining me. You are the law with Chile eating, so it's great to have you. Good luck, Good everybody. Good luck. See you Thank soon. you, Shanina. Okay. Bye. Bye. Okay, there we have it. Shahina was seen with the um, League of Fire announcement. So let's get the people in tonight who are ready to eat some pods. So first of all, we have Mr. 405, Leo Alexander. Then we have... Lee Alton. Then we have Big G, Gary Taylor. Then we have Adele Wilkinson. And finally, we have Paul Jones. Hey guys, how are we doing? All good. Love, mate. How are you? Good, mate. We, ha we have five tonight. I'm looking forward to it. I'm optimistic tonight. We are going to get a second speed round. I can tell a few of you look ready for a bit of speed action. So just to go through the rules, um, I've sent you all a box that contains in different bags. Also contains the waiver. You've all sent me pictures or videos or whatever of you, your signed waivers, so we're good to go. Um, so like I said, in that box, we have five bags numbered one, two, three, four, and a blank one. Um, so we've got an easy round, a medium round, a mystery round, which we probably know now, and then we've got the hard round, and then we have the speed round, okay? So the rules are that we will go through 10 rounds of chilies, one by one. I'll check that you're ready with you giving me the thumbs up, and I'll check that you're finished by you holding up the stalk. You must eat the chili all of the, all of the flesh, all the way down to the stalk, so we can't see any chili left at all. Um, there's no drinking at all. If you drink, you're out. If you stick, you're out. Um, if we get down to two people in a round that's not the speed and one person bows out, then that other person has to finish the pod in order to win the round. Okay. So, yeah, you've seen the other championships. Is everybody ready? Give me the thumbs up. Just put me fan on. Yeah, no problem. Do what you need to do. 
And if you could all open your boxes if they're not already open and find bag one and put the pods out from round one on the table. Okay, so the first pod that we have this evening is round one. And it's the jalapeno de guito. Let me get the banners on. There we go. Round right one, the jalapeno de guito, which is three to 8,000 Scoville units. Um, quite a thick flesh, lots of seeds, not too much heat. So is everybody ready for round one? Hold your chilies in the air. And three, two, one. Chomp those chilies. It shouldn't be too much of a challenge this one just ease you into it make sure that you all get round through one round at least wouldn't want to see anybody go home after one round lee would we oh uh, which lee <laughs> what color are the seeds Stephen? say again what color are the seeds seeds should be white are they not no no no, no the black one. It doesn't look very nice. No, mine's the same. Mine's black. Okay, well, if if there's any problems with any of the pods, just eat the flesh and put the um put the seeds down. That's fine. It's only round one. Sure. Gary, you got black seeds? Um, no, no. It's, just, it's quite a big pod. It's it's a meal. <coughs> it's a starter, mate. Yeah, Del, sorry about that. Yeah, just, just, ooh, I would just maybe have a look. Maybe you can just do that. What is that? That's a jalapeno. Yeah, you have that instead. Shall I have that instead? Yeah, just have that. Yeah, that's, that's, have that instead. That's the thing about online tournaments. I'm not there physically to be able to replace the pods if there's anything wrong with them. And, it's difficult to be able to send you all double pods for every single round. So we are going to encounter it. It's interesting, funny. That's a, that's a meal, that is. Yeah, it's a decent Massive. Size, isn't it? Massive. Yeah, nice, nice though. Tiny little bit of heat, but a lovely little pod. Uh, uh, huh. You take your time, Lee Alexander. So many seeds. No rush, mate. Just tell me that they're black and then you don't have to eat them. They're black. <laughs> yeah, just eat them, mate. <laughs> Paul, when was the last um, challenge or anything that you did? Um, about three months ago, I think. Was it the last competition that we did? Um, yeah, I believe so, yeah. Nice. That gives everybody I else might have done pizza. Maybe Say in again? between, but I think I might have done pizza challenge in between, but nothing else, I don't think. Gives everybody else a little bit of hope, doesn't it? <laughs> ah, still feeling good. <clears throat> You're gonna be brilliant in that speed round, Lee Alexander, if you get there. I not I'm not. You're as quick as me in speed. We'll be able to put a film on. There's so many seeds, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a meal, it's a meal. They all come with their challenges. <laughs> You'd be pleased to know that there's no other ones as big as that. I just really want to see the speed round and how you all tackle the ones from the speed round, especially one certain pod in there. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Yeah, see, don't get it out yet. Don't spoil it, Paul. Christ. <laughs> I've got it all set out, laid on the table, in order. How I just want to see people, how they would tackle that individual pod. Right, are we all finished the jalapeno de guito? Probably. Just you, Lee, Alexander. <laughs> Are 
Give me the thumbs up when you finished. That's good. Good man. Oh, that was hard work. Yeah, just been one of those. They're all hard work in their own way. Okay, right. Round two is the Pusher Pusa Juwala, which is the Indian finger chili. Used a lot in Indian cooking, quite often what they use in the jar Um The good thing about this chili is it's got that sort of stingy heat at the end of your tongue. So it's not a building chili like a habanero or a reaper or whatever. It's got that instant stingy heat. So hold your chilies up. Let me know that you're ready. Lovely. And three, two, one. Chomp those chilies. A significant jump here from 3 to 8K to 30 to 50K. But it's the it's the stingy heat that you get. It's a different type. It's a tip of the tongue heat. How's that? Well, Lee Alexander finished first this time. Lee Alton finished. Gary, how was that? All good? Yeah, good. I thought I thought the first one might have been hotter, but it, I think it's just more of a meal, more of a chili. First one is just to ease you in, mate, just to, to lubricate you ready to ease in, you know? Yeah. Adele, you done? Not yet. Take your time. There's no rush. Awesome. Sometimes we can race through these rounds a little bit quick, and that can be a bit of a hindrance. Do take your time if you need it. Yeah, no rush. You take your time, lads. Girls. <laughs> I've got four days off, so I'm all right. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not in tomorrow, so. All done? Okay, right. So now we move on to round three, which is the Argy Body Snatcher. So this is a cross between an Argy Lemon and an Argy Fantasy. And this one is incredibly floral. So it's, it's quite thin. It's a Peruvian. Well, the Argy Lemon is a Peruvian chili. This has got the same sort of traits as that. But you should find it quite a different flavor from the other one. It's quite, quite floral. So chili's up to the camera. Three, two, one. Chomp those chilies. Oh. <laughs> some people say it tastes like soap. Some people taste tastes like flowers. Some people say citrus. It just tastes horrible. You hate this one. Mate. <laughs> Do you have any products that use RG lemons in? No. <laughs> not, not yet. <clears throat> it, yeah, it's not a pleasant flavour. It is very floral. Do you like it, Gary? It's not bad. Yeah, I probably wouldn't put it on my curry, but it's um, yeah, it's, it's very floral, as you say, quite crunchy as well. It's, it's not the type of chili that you'd have in a curry, is it at all? It's like uh, maybe salads, that type of thing, you know? Yeah. Maybe a potpourri. <laughs> yeah. I like his fingers. Yeah. <laughs> Some people hate uh, that. Man, Lee Alton finished. Yeah, well done. Yeah. Good man. Paul Jones finished. All good, mate. Yeah. And Adele, you took that well because you hate those, don't you? Oh, I might do one of them actually. That looks good. With the passion. That was awful. Okay, oh, so take out. Good. You can all take out bag two now. That's the end of the easy chilies, and now we move on to bag two, which is the medium chilies. Three of these. And this is, they're all habaneros, different type of habaneros. And the first one that you need to find is the paper lantern. So this one's a little bit, it's not a shiny chili. It's quite dull looking on the outside. It's meant to look like a Chinese lantern. <clears throat> oh. And if you can just hold that up to the camera. No. Come on, Lee. That's it. Okay, everyone ready? Which one? The one on your left, Adele. This one? No, that's your right, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, so everyone ready? Yep. Three, 
two, one. Chomp those chilies. Paper lantern habanero. This is 150 to 400,000 now. So we've moved up to the triple figures. Come on, Lee. Come on, Lee. Mind of the matter, remember? Which are you fighting, your mind or your body? Oh, my throat. <laughs> your throat. So your body. <clears throat> Adele, what do you find is the hardest, your mind or your body, to control? Body. Body. That's it. Good. He, Paper lantern he doesn't, habanero. Me. he doesn't bother me anymore. It's my stomach now. Is it? I just said no. But that comes later, doesn't it? As long as you're quick enough, that's later. Yeah. But for me, it's the heat, and my, my throat doesn't want to let me swallow. Yeah. A bit like my wife. <coughs> Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <One rude. laughs> All good, Lee Alexander. You good to continue? I'll, I'll give it a go, yeah. Good man. <laughs> Love it. Okay, everyone finish that one. Just hold up your stalks. Just let me see. Ah. Uh. Oh, yeah. This is yeah. it. Okay, so now we move on to round five, which is the Congo Peach. <coughs> Jem reviewed this one yesterday in Newcastle, and he said that he didn't particularly like it. He said it was a bit bitter. Um, it wasn't as sweet as we thought it would be. So, yeah, you can have a go yourself and tell me what you think. <coughs> Hold the Congo Peach up, and this is round five. Three, two, one. Chomp those chilies. Congo Peach is 300 to 450,000 Scoville heat units. So reliably a little bit hotter than the paper lantern. Well, well. Oh, Lee, is that it? Okay. Right, so Lee's gone off camera, <coughs> which we're allowed to do. So that's the end. Thank you, Lee. Round of applause for Lee. Good on, Good on, Dad. The dark horse was not as dark as we thought. Oh yeah, that's warm. <coughs> that's warm. That one. <coughs> is it? Yeah. Is it as big as Jem said? Sorry, Steve. No. Um, Jem reviewed this yesterday on Nuke, and he said it was pretty bitter. It's bitter, and um, yeah, there's a definite fire to that one. It's, it's, it's hit hit the back of the tongue now. That one. That's that's hot. Yeah, we're starting to ramp up now to the. Um, we've got the last of the. Everyone finished that one, by the way. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> or any effect of any of them on you at all? No, not yet. <clears throat> any, any effect on you at all? Yeah, I've got it in the back of my throat, but it's all right. Yeah, yeah, Gary. Yeah, back of the tongue. That's where it's hit me. Good. You you think you good to continue? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Good. And Adele, all good. Yeah. Nice one. You're looking strong now. <clears throat> okay, right. Round six is the Pimenta Cougar. So, again, another habanero. So, this one is about 300 to 400,000. So, in the same sort of range as the other two, um, the sort of the mid uh, 500,000 ish. Completely different taste and hits a different part of your mouth. So, if you can just hold those Pimenta Cougars up. And three, two, one. Chomp those chilies. Meant to three hundred to four hundred thousand round six. And that's where the easy chilies finish. Oh. How's that on gas? That's hot. Well, I haven't picked yeah. it yet, but I know it's going to be hot. But you've also got all the other chili starting to build now, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Apart from everyone, apart from Paul and Adele, actually, in very and Lee, actually. In fact, you all, you all look absolutely just unfazed by it. To be honest with you, it's very impressive. The glass is off, though. Oh, Mike, that was a problem. <laughs> Everyone done? 
Tell me, do you, do you need uh, a couple of seconds or are you all right to continue? No, that's right. Yeah, good. Okay. All right. Yeah. So now we move on to round seven, which is the Joker, the round that's just a little bit different from the others. So this one is a dried scorpion and it's in the bag with no number on, Barry. So find the bag with no number on. Oh, my God. Take, take out the dried scorpion. I would take off the stalk. Oh, I've got it here. That's it. Okay. Oh. So this, that the reason... Was... Yeah, that's not too big. That's not too big. Yeah, the like reason this round is different is because this one is dry and it's like glass in your mouth. It's hard to get down and it stays in your mouth afterwards. Everybody ready for the dried scorpion at approximately 1.2 million Scoville? We're taking a huge jump here. You ready? This is where we separate the winners from the also rounds. Five, four, three, two, one. Of seconds extra on the countdown there just to give it more effect. Oh. Come on, guys, think of the train on the way home. That's it. <coughs> Remember, you're not allowed to cough because of COVID rules. Paul, all down. Oh, good. good, Lee. Good. My fan, my fan blew a bit into the back of my throat. <laughs> oh. This round is lethal. This sets you up for the final three rounds and makes them super tough. Juan Adele, my another matter. I'm done. You're still there. You're good. <clears throat> so that was round seven. The dried chocolates, well, it could be yellow, it could be chocolate scorpion, but they're around the same sort of level. Everyone good to continue? <coughs> Thumbs up if you're good. <coughs> Gaz, you all right? Yeah. Lovely. Into my throat. Rick was right about you, mate. You're doing brilliant. Yeah. Okay, right. you can take, take out bag three. I'm which, crying. This is the hot chilies. <coughs> Oh, shit. This is the hot one. Yeah, this, this is the serious rounds now. Uh, and we are moving into round eight, which is the chocolate <coughs> one. And it's the big chocolate riot. Oh. Oh. <coughs> Excuse me. Some big chocolate riot. Don't worry, guys. There'll be a little bit of moisture in this round that you can use to clear your throat. <coughs> right, everybody ready? Hold your chilies in the air. Three. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, the chocolate one. Three, two, one. Chomp those chilies. Big chocolate riot, 950,000 Scoville units. <coughs> These are the around the million. What well only? Man. Oh, that's dumb. <clears throat> oh, Jesus. Yeah, this one's fairly hot. It's quite bitter as well. 950,000. Yeah. <clears> I <throat> know, I haven't started mine yet. Revving up to it, guys. <clears throat> just looks, it just looks horrible. <laughs> it looks horrible. <clears throat> it's got to look horrible for round eight, though, isn't it? It, it can't be all friendly. Oh, man. <sighs> Remember, there's no pressure. If this is if this is your limit, this is your limit. But if you want to give it a go, give it a go. Man. 
Yeah. <clears throat> Paul Johns, how's that heat wise? Yeah, it's building. It's getting there. Yeah. <clears throat> Still good though. Still all comfortable. Oh, for now. That nearly come up then. Lee, yeah. how are you doing? All right. Yeah, I'm right. Yeah. That's me. Gaz, you finished. Round of applause for Gaz. He's gone out on round eight, the big chocolate riot. Well done, mate. Really great effort. Honestly, a lot of people would get nowhere near that. You've been a great competitor. Well, Thank you very much, mate. Thank you. I just I'm didn't sure. want to pop up my laptop. Mate, honestly, you, you've done brilliantly. I'm going to put you back in the lobby if you can stay around. Do if not, thank you very much. Okay, and then there were three. So we got two more rounds, then we might have a speed round on our hands. Okay, so if you can take out the big yellow mama now. My favorite chili from the time burner. Yeah. So this is floral and hot. Everybody else said they were, they were quite surprised at how floral this is for a super hot. So we're we ready. Let me just show it. Ooh, didn't even show the big chocolate riot. There we go. Big chocolate riot and big yellow mama. So you can see these are quite floral and they've got that super hot sort of level of heat. Okay, right. Three, two, one. Chomp those chilies. <clears throat> 900 and still in the chocolate riot. Approximately 1 million Scoville units for the big yellow mama. How's that, Adele? As floral as they said? No. You do, <clears throat> you do look quite out of training mind, Paul. Like What's that, Sally? Just saying, you do quite look out of training. You look quite phased by it all, you know? Yeah, I, I'm struggling. I'm sweating and that, really. It's just a game face. <laughs> do you play poker? No, but I should. You should do. How was that one, Lee? Bitter. And yeah. big. Bitter, is it? And big. Good. Nearly there. One more pod, and then we get a speed round. I can feel it. Well done, Lee. I can feel it. Paul Johns is never going to give him on round 10. Lee looks like he's never going to give him round 10, nor do you, Adele. I think, I think we're going to get a speed, a three-way speed. Okay, everybody ready for round 10? The final round? No? Yeah, we'll just wait for a moment. Just say if you need time. Yeah, well done. Okay. Lee, you ready? Yeah. Yeah, Adele, you ready? Good. Paul, you ready? Good. Okay, round 10 is the Hurtberry. So this is a cross between, oh, I can't remember the details of it. I think it is a jigsaw. Um, it's a jigsaw and two others. I can't remember, but it is lethal. This is um, approximately 1.5 million Scoville units, and it is one of the hottest chilies that you can possibly get. Some say it's hotter than the Reaper, but we will find out. Okay, three, two, one. Chomp those cheese, the hurt berry. Well done. Stalk off. <clears throat> Good man, Paul. How was that? Hot. Yeah. <clears throat> it's getting That's there the first now. I've seen you think look like something's hot. <clears throat> How's yeah, that look? It's starting to build. I think it's a bit of everything, though, at the minute. That's it. It's all of them together, isn't it? <clears throat> Lee, how's that compared to a Reaper? Um, that was hot. 
It's hard to say on the TV, though. It is hard to say. If you had just that one chili, you'd be able to give a, a better opinion. But when yeah. you've had nine other ones before it and your whole mouth's finished. <coughs> Adele, how is that? You don't like the Reaper taste, do you? So how no. did that did that have Reaper taste? It did. Yeah. <coughs> It must be just that sort of level of heat that gets above like that 1.5 level. Have you had a hurt berry before? You have. I've done the time burner last year. Last year. Lee, we good? How about? You're out. Okay. All right, mate. Well, well done, Lee. That's for Lee. Really well done. That is awesome. You got to round 10. And we remove you, mate. If you can hang around, do. But if not, no problem. <clears throat> okay. So we get a speed round. Yay! Speed round, speed round, speed round. Okay. Get bag four out and get the chilies out. And I get to go through what they are. So, in the speed round, for the first time, we have White Ghost, reviewed today by Jem on Nuke. <coughs> Habanada, which is habanero flavour, but with zero heat. Good for children. It's quite thick walls. Thirdly, we have Habanero Harold St. Bart's, which is a hot habanero. Next, we have Cyril by Rich Ingham, which is a cross between Argy Lemon and Dorset Naga. Next, we have uh -oh. an Lemon. And finally, <clears throat> the Joker in the pack is the Thunder Mountain Longhorn. So this is a really long chili that you will need to decide how you're going to eat. Chop it up into little bits. Or you know how you're going to do it, but yeah, the Thunder Mountain Longhorn. And just to thank Mark Thomas here, um, who's a friend of mine in, in the new group for supplying the Thunder Mountain Longhorn, which is our, yeah, it's going to make it nice and interesting. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Top Any off, Del. We're ready, yeah? Any order? You can do them however you want. Any order. That's the fun of the speed round. You can go big first, small round, big first, small first, hot first, mild first, however you want. So, get the bell. So, what you need to do is obviously go through all the chilies. You must eat everything down to the stalks. Okay. I would advise you to take the stalks off to begin with, um, just so that there's no, we don't want anything like Dorset Chili Festival where. There was bits left on the stalks, and we had to, um, you know, talking about a different winner or everything. I don't any controversy or whatever, um, but it's down to you. You let me know when you're ready to begin. Dell, you good? What What's your strategy, Dell? You going in with the the mild one first? Yeah. Paul, any strategy? Just pick them up and eat them. I think. <laughs> <laughs> right, Paul, you ready? Yep. So it is the first person, okay, to eat all six chilies and show me an open mouth with tongue, nothing left in the mouth. Wish you the best of luck. Really pleased that we got to the speed round. Okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> Chomp those chilies. Come on, Del, it's beans. I see it. What's that, Paul? Number three, number four? Three, I think. Bob. Good man. Got that one. What 
what are those tweaks that you get? Is it those laces? And you just rub them in your mouth. Strawberry laces, that was it. <clears throat> oh, Paul. Adele's done. <clears throat> My goodness me, there's no messing about there, mate. Well done, you. That was incredible. Thank you very much. Well done. You are the winner, Del. You did so well. I'm going to let you finish. <clears throat> I know you won. Well done, it. Del. Do you want to finish, Del? Yeah, no messing about. Can I bring the other ones back in while you do, or would you like to just do it with us? Whatever you want. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to bring some guys back in. Lee. Gary and other Lee. So, guys, we got a winner. We had a speed round and we got a winner. Paul Jones is going to the final. Well done, Paul. Well he done, mate. <coughs> different level, different, different planet, mate. You are unbelievable. Well Incredible. done to you all. Cheers, guys. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. And Lee Alton, Lee Alton get into round 10 to the Hurtberry. It was at number nine. <clears throat> was it was it the big yellow mama? Yeah, it was big and it was bitter. It never went down properly. I could feel it trying to come back up. <laughs> and after the first Hurtberry, it's become a good. Mate, honestly, all of the all of the different chilies attack you in so many different ways, and it's hard to do. You know what I mean? To juggle yeah. and keep your mind, mm -hmm. keep your body in one place. And it's yeah. Hat off to Adele, though. She is not giving up, and she's Adele, going to all the way to the end. Well done, Adele. Adele, just, how many? How many have you had? Say, Steve, Steve, just uh, that um, that the 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 cheeky one, that the the dried one. I was expecting it to be like cardboard, but mine was like um, it, it just crushed like glass. It just sort of fell apart in my mouth. I was expecting it to be like a hard chili. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and I breathed in, and a bit went down the back of my throat. I'm not saying I would have gone, could have gone on much longer, but that bit stuck down the throat just done me. It, it, sound, it sounds like it was proper, proper dried. Rather it was than really, really dried, yeah. It was just, it just went, it just, it's like a, like a, a light bulb just smashing in your mouth. That's what it felt like. Was it hot? Yeah, obviously, <laughs> very hot. <laughs> this is it. I mean, when you're drying pods out, obviously, you get to a certain point where it's like it's pretty dry, and then there's a point where it's literally you can just crush it in your hands and it drops to dust. And yeah. It sounds like you've got one of those, yeah. It could have gone to dust almost. and I think I inhaled a bit and it, it's still there somewhere about here. Hats off to you, Adele. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you guys want to join in the speed round with her and finish off the pod as well, feel free. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. You could tackle the Thunder Mountain Longhorn. I'll try that. <laughs> That would be you know, interesting to see while we're waiting how you'd eat the Thunder Mountain Longhorn. I oh, actually struggled with very... the first jalapeno. It just, it just, my throat just didn't want to let me swallow it. It's so thick walled and, and so much oh, liquid in it. Oh, just, it wasn't hot. It's just, ah. Oh, I, I agree. I, agree. I, I found that first chili uh, was such a, a, a lump to eat with yeah. all the food and everything. It, and it had a good tickle of heat, but I was thinking, Christ, if this is the first one, I've, I could be struggling here. <laughs> exactly the same. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but uh, yeah, it was good. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed Well, yeah, I did enjoy it <laughs> up until the point I nearly threw up, but it was fantastic. Adele, are we up to the Thunder Mountain? Two more. Uh, oh, that's out. Gary, mate, I thought you did really, really well. Honestly, it was great to have you. You know, you, you. You, get, you get as far as you can within your own limits. Do you know what I mean? And, like, you know, I'm not encouraging anybody to push, you know, so that they hurt themselves or whatever. But it's just, yeah. just all fun. And it was great to have you. Thank you very much. Um, I've never done anything like this. And um, I was genuinely very nervous coming up to this competition. Uh, I wasn't sure how my body was going to react. <laughs> 
I, I genuinely think I hit my limit there. <clears throat> that um, sort of chocolate coloured one was my limit. Um, especially after the build up of all the other chilies. I think if it was just that one and then going on to the next, I would have been all right. But it's just the build up. Too, it, just too much. My mouth was on fire. Is this the last bite, Adele? Excuse the hot hair, but hats off to you, Adele. Well done, Adele. Well done. Just like the time burner, never gave up. I, I, I can't imagine. Yeah. Well done, Adele. <coughs> well done, man. That was such a brilliant round. That was such a good stop. round. Paul, well done, mate. You are going through to the final. Don't make any plans for five o'clock on Halloween. Because we'll no, mate, looking forward to it. <laughs> I've been busy scoping out what the rounds will be, and hopefully we'll have something that will challenge you. Adele, you were just absolutely incredible. Honestly, it's like Time Burner revisited with you. That was like crazy. And I think you must have what had 16 plus what was that 14 30 pods in the last 24 hours so you know unbelievable lee both lees lee, and well lee orton thank you for stepping in at the last minute and i know we were kind of late dash and pods and stuff but thank you for you know and coming to the call another shot gary thank you mate really appreciate you. you coming appreciate you inviting me Appreciate it. Thank you. Lee, Alexander, good luck with your sauce tomorrow, buddy. <laughs> and thank you, guys. I'm going to remove you all one by one. And, Cheers. yeah, it's a brilliant round. One of my favourite ones. Thanks, David. Well done. Well done again, guys. Thank you. <clears throat> Jeez. So there we have it. Seven rounds done. We have our seven finalists. So if I can actually remember their names, Neil Childs, Cameron Grennan um, from the early rounds, Matt Tangent. Um, we have tonight, Paul Jones. We have, who else? Three more. My memory's going to go. I can't remember. Who are, the, who are the other ones? Anyway, you know, you know who they are. We've got seven people coming on Halloween. And we're going to do the final. Shahina will be back and we're going to preview them and it is going to be absolutely excellent. So thank you very much for watching. See you next time. And yeah, take care.